All right, so welcome to yet another amazing video for the Mi 11X, also known as the Poco F3 and the Redmi K40. Now, this is a ROM that I have loved on the Poco X3 Pro, and we are talking about Mi 11X today. So I figured let's give it a try. Let's use it for a couple of days and give you guys a review whether you should install it or not. Stay tuned till the end of the video because we have benchmark numbers coming up and I did play a few games. So I will tell you my experience about that as well. But before we get into the details, if you haven't already, please subscribe because it doesn't cost you anything and it really motivates us to make amazing content like this. Now, without further ado, hello, some people. Welcome to Phone Ops. My name is Kalash. Let's get going. Now, first things first, let's see what we have here. We have Dubfest official Android 12 L updated on the 3rd of July, 2022. Now, if we talk about the changelog, most of the time the changelog on these ROMs is, I was about to say that, extensive. So I'm not gonna get into the details of this very, very long changelog, but the notes are very, very important. It does have G apps included. SE Linux status is enforcing, CTS is passed by default, which means your ROM is secure. You can use banking applications, recommended firmware, whatever works better for you. I always use the latest Indian firmware because my device is an Indian Mi 11X, right? Now can be dirty flashed over previous updates and OTA will work only with stock recovery. So not your TWRP, but your stock dub fest or linear joist recovery, whatever this ROM works with, right? Now that's everything about the ROM, but how does it run? How good is it? What are the features and how does it perform? Now, first things first, the moment you put into any USB ROMs these days, which are based on Android 12.1, you have your very standard layout over here, your Google apps at the bottom, like Google Dialer, Contacts, Messages, everything working fine. In 120 Hertz mode, Google feed on any ROM on the Mi 11X, including MIUI, is a treat. It works smooth as butter, and that's what is evident over here as well. Now, if you swipe from the top to bottom, you do get your quick tiles, and if you go to the edit menu, remember, this is Derp Fest, which we are talking about, which is not only really focused at performance, it also gives you a bunch of features which are very, very interesting. Now, you do get your privacy access tiles, which are by default, present in Android 12.1 or Android 12. Caffeine is available over here. You do have dub space shortcut heads up can be enabled or disabled live display audio mode reading mode refresh rate. Wow, that's a lot of things, isn't it? And the moment you click on any of them, it just gets added to the main set of tiles. Now, as far as refresh rate is concerned, you can go to 60 and 120. There is no 90 Hertz mode, although you do have a 60 to 120 Hertz auto mode. I prefer to keep it always in 120 Hertz mode because I like smoothness and battery life for me is not a big concern. Now, if you talk about the power menu, you do have your advanced power menu available. The setting shortcut is available. The good thing with this ROM on the Mi 11X is the smoothness is just next level. And I think that's the case with almost all custom ROMs for the Mi 11X these days, right? Now, apart from this, if you press and hold over here, you don't get the new Atter 12.1 UI for the wallpaper picker. You do get a setting shortcut. And this launcher, you know, although it is a custom ROM launcher, it doesn't really have a ton of customizations. It does have some basic customizations and the launcher, of course, is version 1.0 of the Derp launcher. Widgets, of course, Android 12.1, standard affair, everything working as expected and wallpaper and style, well, what I can say. I mean, come on, Google have done a splendid job. You do have app grid customization here. System icon packs can be changed. System fonts can be changed on the fly, which is a really, really good thing. Even the UI doesn't restart. So that's a good thing here. If you go to change wallpaper, you do have a bunch of derp space or derp fest wallpapers and Monit UI will change its own colors with that, which is a really, really good thing. Now, apart from this, let's quickly actually dive into settings over here. Let's go to about and let's see what all we get. We get Android 12 L in this official version of Derp Fest. This is the maintainer's name, June security patch, and the kernel is the Lumos CAF plus kernel. So whenever you have CAF in the picture, you will notice that most of the time the performance of these ROMs with CAF kernels or CAF features is very, very good. And that's the case with Derp Fest as well. Let's quickly dive into settings before we actually get into the performance part of it. And all the options over here are pretty, pretty standard. You do have a enhanced game mode over here in which you do get angle experimental drivers and stuff like that. You have your preferred performance mode and all the features like block full screen event, disable auto brightness, disable swipe screenshot, 
they are present and they work just fine. So the moment you launch any app or any game, you will see that your game space, which now looks much, much better is available. And as you can see, if you enable FPS, you get a FPS counter over here as well. Although the 90 FPS for games is not unlocked and switching between apps is sweet. It's very, very smooth. You can have a screenshot over here, clear all button and a Google lens button. If you press over here, you can have multi window, which is a good thing. As you can see, two apps running at the same time. And the cohesive experience is something that I really, really like about the fest. Right now, that's not everything. If you further dive into settings, you will see you have something called as derp space warning insanely cool stuff ahead. So that's a good way to portray your home. And I kind of like it because it's good, right? I mean, we will say not so good things about this ROM as well, but for now, let's pick the good ones, right? Now you do have battery customization over here, ton of options, carrier label customization, clock and date settings, status bar items can be enabled, disabled, traffic indicators, as you can see, can be enabled. And you do have some miscellaneous customizations, including the Dubfest logo. And just look at the amount of options you have in the first menu itself. Then you have notification customization, quick setting customization. I mean, you can go on and on about this particular ROM as far as customization is concerned. Lock screen shortcuts, lock screen UI, ambient and always on display can be enabled or disabled at your will. You do have Monet override over here, which means you can customize the Monet engine as well. You do have nav bar pulse. I don't use a nav bar, so that's okay for me on-screen navigation bar and general settings. Unlimited Google photo storage is available and burn-in protection is available as well. Now, as far as this ROM is concerned, your banking applications or Amazon Prime HD, or if you even talk about, you know, Netflix HD and stuff, it should be working just fine because Wideband L1 is present, your safety net is passing just fine. So at far, as far as that is concerned, you won't really have a problem. Charging speeds on this ROM are pretty decent. The only area where I found a little issue was the battery section. Because when you use the always on display, up to 20 to 25% of battery is sucked by the always on display itself, which in my opinion is not a great thing, but it could be just me. And as you can see, I've tried gaming. Gaming in my opinion for 60 FPS is pretty good. I've not had any issues with gaming as far as, you know, BGMI or Apex Legends is concerned. So pretty good. And come on, this is a Snapdragon 870. So what do you really expect, right? Now let's move on to the benchmark numbers before we actually end this video. If we talk about anti 2 benchmark, I was a little disappointed. 658,604, I would like to see more like 680, 690 because 670, 680 is where MIUI is. The temperature did increase by 5.3 degrees and the battery did drop by 4%. Now, moving on further, if we actually go to Google Photos, where we do have unlimited storage, we can have a look what sort of CPU throttling did we get, right? So let's quickly have a look at that. All right, as you can see, CPU throttled to 88% of its max performance and the average was 225, 535, and the max was 238, 410. So pretty decent, nothing, to write home about even if we talk about geekbench numbers you know the single core and the multi-core scores here now, as you can see we got 850 single core and 3078 multi-core so single core on miui is around 1000 ish we are losing around 150 points there so that's about i don't know 15 percent so they can further optimize the performance they can further optimize the battery on this particular rock but all in all if you want to use it as a daily driver and the drain on always on display doesn't really bother you much this is one of the best roms as far as customizations look ui smoothness is concerned and the gaming experience on this rom is pretty decent there is no major bug that i have discovered which would stop me from recommending you to use this as a daily driver let me know in the comment section what do you think about this video until the next one, this is Kailash, signing off at PhoneOps. Keep smiling. Take care. Goodbye.